So Scarlet Spear is out for Warframe, Squad Link is a thing with the event and so is the ability to buy arcanes, new weapons, the new simulacrum and some other stuff as well. But the event I guess is a bit of a grind. The points earning when the event first dropped wasn't really explained very well so it looked like and felt like much more of a serious bloody grind than it actually is. Now don't get me wrong, like I said, it is a grind, but we've got a full month to get this event done. Now I'll go over everything about the event in this video and hopefully help you maximize the amount of points that you get or Scarlet credits that you get, points, credits, same thing. The event has three different ranks and of course you will get an emblem for each one of those. So to do this event, you will first need to jump into one of the Scarlet Spear Flotillas, which is basically just another relay above earth although it is an instance one so you're going to need to pick one and stay on it you're going to need to talk to little duck first and see what she has to sell for those scarlet credits or points that you're going to earn by running these missions this flotilla plays a huge part in earning you and everyone on it as many points as possible once you pick a flotilla like i said stay on it don't leave and then join another or you're going to lose that flotilla rank now in the center of every flotilla is a timer for the current Murex wave with less than 10 minutes downtime between each wave. Each flotilla will have three hours to push back 100 sentient Murex ships with a railjacks and depending on your current flotilla rank, I'm sure it's your flotilla rank and not your overall rank for the event, you will get a bonus amount of Scarlet credits to spend for achieving that pushback. So if you actually succeed in getting rid of the 100 sentient Murex ships within those three hours, depending on your rank, you're going to get bonus credits to spend. Rank one on your current flotilla is 2000 bonus credits. Rank two on the flotilla is 6000 bonus credits. And rank three is 10,000 bonus credits for completing that 100 pushback sentient Murex ships. Now to rank up from rank one to three on your flotilla, you're just going to have to simply run either ground missions or space raids from from the flotilla terminals on each side of that relay so if you manage to hit rank 3 and your flotilla successfully pushes back those 100 murex ships you're going to get 10,000 scarlet credits which you can then spend on little duck whose inventory is also going to have much more items added to it over the coming weeks now remember you have 28 days to complete this event avoid burnout don't fucking push yourself too much to the point that you're going to not log back in and absolutely hate the game, which happens once Burnout hits. But the way each of these respective missions run, whether space or ground, is pretty simple. Kind of, I guess, mobile defense. The event is kind of the way it looks. You buy the op link of Little Duck for 1,000 credits first. You need that if you're going to link to other squads, either whether you're in space, you want to link to the ground and vice versa. Ground missions are where you will run from area to area killing the giant chondrixes that spawn sentience at the same time while sending kill codes up to different squads via that uplink. Now when you're running these ground missions and you damage the crap out of the chondrix and it tells you to drop your uplink in the marked area, everyone in your squad should do it. It makes running the missions much faster. These uplinks can take a lot of damage once enemies start to scale up, so bringing one defensive frame in your squad whether it's a frost bubble gar as well limbo is absolutely awesome for it i would recommend him over everyone else weapons like the kuva brahma deal a lot of damage i've seen other people bringing the redeemer prime basically anything that can hit the murex really hard in the massive eyeball these ground missions are endless missions you can stay in them as long as you want and they scale up pretty damn quickly but just be aware as enemies hit much higher levels the damage that those uplinks can take will greatly increase as well once your uplink is destroyed you can no longer deploy it in that mission so you're going to just have to leave it now the space missions or the space raids are very similar basically a two-pronged mobile defense mission where your squad will have to separate in space your ship will escort a beacon to a certain point beside one of those murex ships they will then drop it to link up with a ground squad then two of your squad mates have to enter the murex ship and drop down one of the uplinks in a certain area to get kill codes from ground boys and just like the ground missions once you deploy your uplink inside the murex ship you will have to defend it against incoming sentience so having any kind of a frame that will help you defensively is definitely worth having 
While those two players are inside the Murex ship, the other two that are outside on the Railjack flying around just basically have to kill enemies and try to stay alive against the new sentient fighter ships, fighting off boarding parties. Enemies do scale up very, very fast in the space mission. By the time you get to the fourth ship, enemy ships will be about level 150 and you will deal next to no damage to them. So it's just about flying around and not dying. Now the good thing about putting the relay down out in space is once it's deployed, it's immune from damage. So it will take no damage from any of these sentient ships. However, once you link back up with it and try to fly it to the next Murex ship, it will start to take damage so fly as fast as you can to the point drop it and then i guess just go around avoiding enemy fire now for running the railjack mission on stream yesterday we were getting close to 1250 credits per run for four murex ships whereas the ground missions were giving us about 1000 credits for roughly the same time spent in mission so railjack felt like it was the better option which i know isn't viable for a lot of players who don't like railjack or don't own one or prefer to play solo the ground missions though are very very much soloable so if you don't want to jump in with public squads then just sticking to the ground missions is the way that you want to do it so the event is pretty simple the grind is high not gonna lie it is gonna take a while to get as many points as i want to get the two weapons i guess and to maybe look at some of the arcanes as well but it's not as bad once you realize how the ranks work on each flotilla and how you earn those bonus credits. Those bonus credits are going to play a huge part in getting you as many of the items that you want as possible. I'm not sure if you have to stay on the flotilla for the full duration of the three hours or if you just need to rank up and then once you hit rank three you're able to leave. I guess I'm going to need clarification on that. So if anyone knows in the comment section already, by all means leave a comment i'm going to jump into it again today on stream and play it the whole day possibly just do railjack missions to try and get the 100 ships pushed back for bonus points if this helps you out in any way at all hit that like button or don't subscribe or don't and as always thanks very much for watching